Hi, this is an update of the review that I did for the Polaris role-playing game Core Rulebook 1.5 beta version. Now that the Polaris role-playing game Core Rulebook 1 is officially out, I'm going to point out the many improvements between the beta version and the current version and I'm also going to give you the reasons of why you should be playing the Polaris role-playing game. Now let's get started. Well first of all, if you are not familiar with the Polaris role-playing game, I recommend that you watch my review, I'm going to put a link in the description below. And it's basically a science fiction game, but with a very important twist. It features underwater intrigues and adventure. Now let's talk about the improvements. The current Core Rulebook 1 is very much improved. You have excellent organization when it comes to the uh, bookmarks, so it's really easy to navigate the entire document. It has received many improvements graphically uh, speaking. The overall graphic design of the document is very much improved. So for example, let me show you an image of the beta version right here. This is a zoomed in image and as you can see it's quite blurry, it looks uh, somewhat pixelated and low res. And if you notice in the upper uh, part there is like this dark box uh, covering uh, over the image and it feels somewhat uh, constraining or limiting. But now take a look at this image of the Core Rulebook 1, the, the current version. As you can see, the graphics are crispy, are quite clear, they, they look, they're quite beautiful to be honest. And I especially like the bubbles on the left side. And as you can see, the, that dark line up top has already been removed and that enhances that feeling of freedom of exploring the underwater environment. So that's quite nice. And just take a look at these maps, these images of the world of the deep communities and cities. Looks really nice. Looks, looks better than Google Earth. <laughs> and the names of the different uh, communities and cities are very appropriate for that area of the world because this is many years in the future. So you have in America, you have names like Yucata, uh, Fuego Libertad, Amazonia. Uh, Cervera, Hudson, uh, Clintock, Mall. So those are very American names and well uh, loosely based on names that you would expect to find in those regions. And then you have places in Europe. So for example you have Gallia, uh, Cross, Litua or you have places that are more uh, Asian sounding such as Piang, Onaku, Mm, Kai, etc. So you have many different names that add to the realism of the game because you would expect uh, those places to be called like that depending on the region. And you also have a map of the world of the deep, of the nations and the factions. And it's pretty cool because as you can see in this image you, you can see the zone of control or, or influence of each of the different factions. So that's quite nice and, and I just love the the graphics of the map, it looks really nice. Now, I am going to point out a couple of errors that were not fixed in case uh, the um, Black Book has uh, plans to, to fix them in a, an update or something. Because, for example, in page 11, as you can see, it says 4 4. And there is also another area, another place in. Uh, page 176 under fame levels it says the his notoriety so it's too bad that those errors slipped under the radar but they could be updated on the PDF now uh, this um, the Polaris uh, Core Rulebook 1 and Core Rulebook 2 can also be obtained in physical format in slipcase uh, in a, uh, slipcase edition but there's also a deluxe edition so um, you might want to check into that if you want to uh, purchase the physical edition of the game now I'm going to give you the reasons as to why I think that you should be playing the Polaris role playing game well first of all the setting the setting, the setting is quite rich and original. I can see people buying this just for the setting alone. 
the way that they focus so excellently on the way the world would have turned out if some sort of catastrophe happened where the surface became quite toxic and ravaged. The way that they describe the civilizations of the deep is just great. So you have all the details on the different factions, on the different nations, like the hegemony, the Red League, the Polar Alliance. You have all the information on the minor powers, such as Amazonia, the Rift States, New Lemuria. You have the important factions and groups, such as the Azure Alliance, the Geneticians, the Fellows of the Deep, the information on pirates and raiders, and all the data concerning the world beneath the waves, anything related to ancient ruins, caves, city life, children, clothing, cloning, fertility, because in Polaris, fertility is a very important thing. Uh, you really need to check out my review to see what all of that is about. And you also have information on coral, currency and trade, uh, drinkable water, uh, genetic and pharmaceutical research, languages, the lay of the land, law. This is an incredibly rich setting with all the details and information for you to make it come alive. So if your players ask something about the setting, you will have all the answers for them and they're going to feel uh, quite immersed, uh, no pun intended. And you also have information about the surface and the underdeeps. And this leaves a lot of potential for further adventures. What if your uh, characters uh, want to explore the, the hostile surface of the planet or go deeper into the underdeeps or perhaps even have some space adventures? And when it comes to character creation, the system is quite flexible. And I also like it how you can customize the type of campaign that you want depending on the power levels that you use during character creation. So you can have a very gritty game or a very cinematic game, or something in between. And all the options uh, to build your character, such as uh, character concepts, um, base abilities, the, the genetic type of your character, maybe you're sort of like a mutant, or maybe you're a natural human, or maybe you have uh, different types of mutations and alterations. Uh, you also have all the details uh, of starting age, geographical origins, professions, advantages and disadvantages. I also like it that they included the pre-generated characters because that way you can get started right away. No need to um, get into all of the details concerning character creation. Just grab one of these uh, pre-gen characters and you're ready to go. And the professions, there's a really good variety of them. You have assassin, bartender, bounty hunter, diplomat, elite soldier, spy, submariner, technician, trader. You could have a non-violent campaign even if you wanted to. Maybe you wanted to play as a sort of like a diplomat or sort of um, a merchant. You could have a campaign uh, customized just like that. But I would highly recommend that you would add combat because combat in Polaris is really exciting. The game system, even though it's easy to understand, it has a lot, a lot of granularity and enough depth so that those of you that want uh, several options uh, during battle uh, you will feel satisfied because you have different types of actions. If you are fighting with melee, all different types of melee weapons and maneuvers, a uh, great section on martial arts and special techniques. You also have different types of range combat options. Maybe you are firing blind or maybe you are using suppressive fire or uh, precision fire if you like a uh, sniper type of character. And with all the details on damage, protection and special weapons as well and details concerning states of health, physical wounds, care and healing, other sources of physical damage such as acid, cold, fire, details on diseases and poisons, recreational drugs, irradiations. Uh, you also have information, of course, of the effect that the water will have on your character, all those pressure and oxygen related uh, situations. And the entire section on the Polaris effect is really cool. And it combines very well with the otherwise hard sci-fi setting because it adds a bit of a science fantasy feel to it with all these um, eff effects related to Polaris of the this unwieldy, almost uncontrollable power that your characters will try to master to produce effects such as changing pressure, deadly whirlpool, energy bolts, force barrier. You could even summon beasts from the Polaris flux 
It, feel, it feels uh, somewhat demonic and, and really cool for this mysterious setting that Polaris handles. You have other effects such as the Polaris wave, and different types of psychic attacks and barriers. And you have all the details to explore the Polaris Flux, which feels like another dimension. You could go there physically or mentally and perhaps even retrieve a person or spirit from, from that Flux. And with all the details of experience, the evolution of your character, information on practice, studying, training, etc., you can develop the character just the way you want it, depending on the campaign. And this uh, core rulebook one also contains an appendix, it's, uh, very well organized with test modifiers, combat tables, wounds, and states of health. There are just too many reasons to play the Polaris role-playing game. I've just given you like a, a little bit, uh, just a sample of uh, what you will find in this excellent role-playing game. I think it's pretty safe to say that the Polaris role-playing game is currently the undisputed champion when it comes to modern underwater sci-fi adventures and intrigues. So definitely consider getting this one and within the next couple of weeks I'm going to be reviewing the core rulebook 2 and the Equinox source book. So um, I hope you will watch those videos and I hope you will enjoy Polaris as much as I have. The originality of this setting, the way um, the underwater theme and the plot is handled, I think it's quite original and surpasses many works of fiction. Well, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.